Hello and welcome to another episode of the Thoughtfully Made Fiber Vlogcast. My name is Amy and I am your host. I am a knitting pattern designer, sewist, sometimes spinner and weaver, and while I would not say that I am an expert at any of those things except for knitting pattern design, I certainly love all of the fiber arts and love sharing all of those things with you every single week that I can here on this channel. So if you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, so glad to have you back. This week, we're going to dive all into my favorite spinning fiber companies. Now, this video is a little bit tricky for me to make because all of these spinning fiber companies create a very small amount of product. They're very thoughtfully curated, very well handled and made. And every single one of them I, that I'm going to mention in the first part of this video are ones that I purchased from over and over again. And always their fibers are wonderfully prepared, easy to spin and just create beautiful color results. So I'm scared to share my secrets with you, but in the interest of not gatekeeping, I'm gonna share with you my four favorite companies for spinning fiber and three more new acquisitions that I've got recently that I'm just really excited to share with you. So without further ado, here are the four spinning fiber companies that I will always repurchase from. The first spinning fiber brand that I will always repurchase from is one that many of you will know, but if you don't yet, just you freaking wait. The Ingolnook Fiber Sisters are two nuns living in New England who, I guess their profession that they do to make money <laughs> is make incredible spinning fibers. They are often sourcing their fibers from incredible single origin sources. And I have seen them stock fleeces that they have carded, dyed, and prepped for us from small farms such as Nice Stock Farms in New York, as well as most recently, Nash Island fleece. Now, if you don't know about Nash Island yarn, you are in for a treat. So as a knitting pattern designer, you probably all know that there are limits to what kind of yarns I can normally feature. This is because I want all of my customers to be able to access either the yarn that I've used or at least a very similar one. Now with Nash Island yarn, there is no such thing. And Ingle Nook Fiber recently released a line of Nash Island fleece based little bats that are just, mm. So Nash Island fleece are sheep, wild sheep that live on an uninhabited island off the coast of Maine and they eat seaweed and all of their fleece gets washed when they encounter salt water splashes and it creates beautiful crimpy very soft to the hand but still has enough texture to really spin up wonderfully i've heard for a long time about nash island yarn but when i saw their nash island fleece i immediately jumped on it i ordered two different bats from them this one is like little like little batlets and one that's a full bat and i just can't wait to spin it up. I think my favorite thing from the Ingle Nook Fiber Sisters is definitely their bats. They sell out very quickly because they're made in very small batches. And I was like holding on to make this video until I found out about their 12 days of Christmas um, holiday spin. And since they've just announced that they're not doing it this year, which is breaking my heart, I can now share about it with you because I'm not afraid that I'm gonna get carjacked or anything like that. So let me go ahead and share with you last year's spin from them. So if you've been on this channel for a while, you may have seen me spin this, but last year's 12 days of Christmas holiday spin was just so scrumptious. I believe these fleeces were from Nice Stock Farms, but I cannot confirm that since the listing is long gone. But they are the most buttery and easy to long draw fiber I've ever seen. And spinning all these was just a joy every single day. And when I was done, I wanted like 50 more of this. This is the yarn that like inspires me to want to spin every day. If I could have a bat like this to spin every day, I would just keep going and never stop. It would become like part of my daily ritual and practice. And I don't know, there's just something about those Tweety silk bits that they've put into this one that was just 
so delightful. So there's one color, that green is one of my favorites, but this icy blue is another one. Let me try to show it. Oh, look at those colors. Look at those Tweety bits. Oh, so delicious. So they also do bats, which are like bats in a braid, which like are like their dyeing style in a braid format which is a comb top preparation, which I also really enjoy. And I have quite a few of those um, finished spins laying around, but my favorite remains the bats. So if you can ever get your hands on a bat from Ingo No Fibers, you definitely should, and you should join their newsletter so you don't miss out on any releases. And then I will be fighting you for those the next time they do a launch. So for the next spinning fiber company, I will always be purchased from Nest Fibers. I was actually looking in my yarn cabinet over there to find a finished skein to show you, but I actually don't have any. So the thing about Nest Fiber is that I love their colors so much that when I finish spinning a skein with it, I usually tend to cast it on pretty quick. So I'm gonna drop some pictures here, but Claire Playtime Mittens original uh, toddler sized sample was knit from nest fiber and I'm currently working on a nest fiber knit so let me just show you. So I spun this quite a while ago, probably a year ago, and I spun it up as a gradient. All I did was break like break the fiber halfway to match and then made sure the ends of the each chunk matched so that I can spin up a gradient. I didn't have to discard too much of it because I feel that nest fibers braids always have such reliable and neat color repeats so that it's very easy to do color management and get a beautiful gradient out of it. So if you're not experienced with gradients and you're a little worried about doing it, they're a great choice. So I'm currently knitting up a Ziggy shawl by Layla Raven, one of my favorite designers. And this one I've just been working on on and off. Uh, during like ballet classes and drop-offs and picks up pickups and doctor's appointments and all that so it's slow going because I'm not like knitting on it full-time but it's working up really beautifully so the, the the cream color here the gray color is Pearl Soho's Good Wool and then the colorful gradient is the nest fiber so you can start you can see that it started with this like greenish yellow and then it transitioned and the Ziggy shawl really is such a great pattern. I think I'll do a separate video, but I've been like on the hunt for patterns that work really well with hand spun yarns. So I will absolutely keep you updated. If you'd like to see that kind of video, leave me a comment so that I can know to prioritize it. But that is my current hand spun hand knit project. I kind of wish I was like looking in my cabinet for a yarn that like a playing and like undyed yarn to do this section in and I couldn't find any that matches the weight of the gradient so I just went with like a sample skin of Goodwill I had on hand that was sent to me for a design proposal by um, Pro Soho and that worked out really well but I think for my next Ziggy I definitely want to hand spin the entire thing. Now before I move on and go into the undyed brand I want to talk about I want to show you what Nest Fibers fiber looks like when it's not yet spun up. So this one is kind of an intense example because the colors are so bright, but this is one I've got from them recently. It comes up in like a big, fluffy, well-prepared, non-compacted braid. Nothing is worse than ordering fiber that costs like a million dollars, like 20 plus dollars, and it comes compacted. That is the worst feeling in the world. This one is Superwash Merino, and this is from their club. I highly recommend their three-month club if you want to experience a few of their fibers. Uh, they are very well-priced for hand-dyed fiber, and um, I purchased a three-month Superwash club so that I can eventually weave a baby blanket or a toddler blanket or big kid blanket because my kid is quite big now, and by the time I finish this project, she's going to be like, eight, nine, she's three now. So I know myself and I know that it's gonna take me a long time. So I purchased a three month club and I will be slowly working my way through all my fiber and eventually make a blanket for her out of it. So she has clubs in like non-superwash fibers, just like plain mixed fibers that comes with things like 
uh, pole worth, BFL, things like that. And then she has a luxury blend that comes with things like silk blends, rose, bamboo blends, those kinds of like more interesting blends. And then she has a super wash cup that's just like straight super wash merino every time. So if you're like me with kids and you have a need for super wash, that would be the club for you. I typically get the mixed fiber club, but this time because I had a project in mind, I got the super wash club. So nest fiber is another favorite around here. So because I've been looking more into uh, spinning fibers that are single breed or single region or easier to work up into a garment without worrying too much about color management, I've been really looking more into more locally sourced yarns. And when I was at Flock Fiber Festival, I saw Skagit Woolen Works, which as you all know, is a brand I have previously purchased and spun for and really enjoyed. Um, Jess at Skagit Woolen Works. She is one half of this company and she used to be my tech editor and her attention to detail is beyond and she has brought it to her fiber offering. So I can't find the skin. I think I washed it and then lost it, but I can't find the skin I spun up from their yarn. But here's some bumps I received recently from them. I bought both of these, I think. This one is a Jacob, 100% Jacob and they, they mark it down a little bit. It's only $16 for four ounces because she said that it had a higher percentage of vegetable matter. But looking at it, it looks quite clean to me. I don't see much VM at all. So all of her fibers are locally sourced to her in Washington and they just curate it and clean it and prep it so well. They are, Jess is a spinner and she would never give you fiber that wasn't well thought out. So the other bump I purchased um, recently, this one is a Romney and BFL Coopworth. I got this one to make some cozy non-superwash socks from and I'm really excited to spin that up. I've also got some like 100% Shetland from them that I'm super excited about. So if you're looking for single origin or single region, small milled fiber that is undyed, non-treated, just generally like as close to processing the fleece as you can get without actually having to process the fleece and you're looking for roving that's suitable for um, long practicing long draw i think skagit woolen mills their their rovings are well prepared uh, appropriately thoughtfully priced and just generally a good choice to practice long draw on so i highly recommend them if you ever get a chance to spin this type of fiber So last, but certainly not least, we have Wound Up Fiber Arts, who in my opinion is the queen of dyeing superwash type yarns and sock yarns, um, or rather fiber to make those types of yarns with. Now, I don't always use superwash or even a nylon blend when I'm spinning, and I'm definitely delving into, like as I've just shown, I'm definitely delving into like non-superwash nylon free blends for my sock spinning, and I'm still experimenting with that. But meanwhile, I've been spinning a lot of Trisha's fiber. So this one is a finished spin I have from her. This one is called Time. This one is 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon, and I spun it up into a three ply, traditional three ply DK for some socks. I think once I finish the shawl, this will be the next thing on my needles for a hand spun project. So I love her colors. I think they're so interesting. Um, for hers, I don't typically, for her colors, I don't typically do any color management. I just split it up by weight into thirds and just go for it. So I actually have a new, a new order from Trisha that I'm gonna unbox and open for you. So I just ripped the little tape off and I will open it for the first time. And actually I was like, I need more yarn. I need more, or I need more fiber to spin from her. But I like already, I, I just got so busy with product launches this month that I forgot I ordered it. So the package just sat around until now. And now I can't remember what I ordered. Has that ever happened to you? Because that's really embarrassing. Um, it's embarrassing for me. So it'll make me feel better if you've also experienced this. Oh, that's pretty. I made some good choices. This one is called Brew and it's got like some coffee tones. Look at that. This is a BFL. I wanted to spin more socks. 
You can see that I'm delving into non-super wash long wool fibers for some sock spinning. I am not a very experienced sock spinner, but I want to get better at it and have stronger socks. So I ordered two different BFLs, mixed BFLs, um, which just mean, if you're new to spinning, that just means that the raw fiber had some uh, brown or black fibers mixed in it just from the natural color of the wool so that just means that you end up with like a beautiful heathered color effect this one is one of my favorite colorways from her of all time called nest egg usually when she dyes it in the superwash bases that are like pure white it comes up more like saturated but then the background color is lighter so it looks lighter overall but i'm loving this moody like dark brownie version of nest egg and can't wait to make some socks from that and now i have to get it back into the bag which is always the challenge so here is her car her logo for this particular blend i'm glad i got my hands on this i have not been spending enough and i need to get back into it back into the game so if i can find a picture i will drop a picture of a previous sock spin and finished socks that I've made from Wound Up Fiber Arts and drop it over here. But if you're into superwash sock fiber spinning, hers is the best. It's just easy, it's mindless. I don't have to think about it. I buy it and I spin it. Make socks. Easy peasy. So those are the four brands of fibers that I will always, always repurchase. So I wanted to share with you a couple of new acquisitions from brands I'm not as familiar with, but so far they all look good. So I'm gonna share with you a few things I purchased. So when I was at Flock Fiber Festival this summer and I met Jess from Skagit Woolen Works for the first time, I also got to meet Brittany Garber who curates the Maker of Color, Makers of Color Collective. And she had a booth at Flock and I purchased this lovely braid from Melanated Boho Bay. This is merino and bamboo, and it is beautifully like sagey, tweedy with like these pink bits in it. And I'm really looking forward to it. This is from her Daisy Jones inspired collection. So like a very 60s vibe. I'm not gonna open it cause I will destroy it if I do. But that was really fun. I enjoyed that. Or rather I enjoy shopping for it. I'll get back to you, I'm spinning. Now that I have prepared for this video and gone through all the fibers I own, I realize I actually own so much fiber and I have to stop buying fiber. So in 2024, my goal is definitely going to be to spin down my fiber collection and share more about spinning with you. So if you're still watching this far, thanks for watching and I hope you will leave a comment and let me know like how long have you been spinning? What have you enjoyed spinning in your time spinning so far? And any recommendations that you'd like to add? I would love to discover more companies as I work through, work down my stash. But for now, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a like and a subscribe. And your comments are always helpful for me for engagement. So please do all of those things if you'd like to see more from me. And I will talk to you very soon.